President-elect Donald Trump vowed mass deportations throughout his campaign, and members of his cabinet have spoken about what that could mean. Well, now immigration advocacy groups are preparing, and the city will soon host a closed-door summit to develop a strategy for immigrants and their families. Joining us now on this Wired Wednesday is GV Wire reporter Edward Smith to break it all down for us. Edward, thanks a lot for being here today. Morning, Kim. So uh, what have the cabinet picks, do you think, uh, said so far about these deportation plans from the president-elect? Yeah, so I mean, this is something they've been talking about for a while. For a while, um, you know, Stephen Miller, one of his the chief of staff picks, mm -hmm. talked about using the National Guard to help enforce immigration policies. Mm -hmm. Now Trump's borders, borders are uh, homing. He has uh, he's taken a more conservative approach, saying that it's going to be targeted. We're not going to, you know, it's not going to be door to door. Big sweep. Not yeah. going to be a big sweep. But you know, at other times, it's 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 still very very open because other mm -hmm. people have are kind of thinking about. You know, Trump said we're going to deport 20 million people, even though you know some counts only peg it at 11 million people. So. Okay, nonprofits getting involved to protect people, especially in California. Yeah, especially in California, where we have such a big uh, population mm -hmm. of undocumented people. Um, yeah, I had a chance to speak with the UFW, and uh, while their mission, while uh, while their mission is usually around helping people apply for those programs, mm -hmm. they've pivoted slightly to helping people who are currently detained. So they're taking their what resources they can to try to get through as many of those cases as they can before the administration change. When there are families who are, you know, part of the refugee community um, or feeling like or, or knowing that that they could be part of this, well, what do you say to these people? What what where do they go? What sh what should they be doing that you based on the research you've done? Um, I mean, so, you know, knowing your rights is going to be the first thing. Okay. Um, that, that, that needs to be done. You know, um, you, you can't do anything without a warrant. People can't come into your house without a warrant. You know, okay. and, you know that's th those are things that, um, those are things that, that, that need to be watch out for. Okay. Um, you, you, yeah, don't, don't do that. Um, okay. You know, Fresno's home to a big refugee community. Um, mm -hmm. After the Afghanistan af evacuation, we mm -hmm. have probably about a thousand people who've come here, you know, escaping the Taliban. Mm -hmm. um, many of them for service that they did for the U.S. military. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's been talk about revoking a lot of those uh, refugee statuses, a lot of the asylum claims, a lot of the parole claims. They want that pulled back, which is how they got here was through parole programs. Okay. But if any of that happened, like their parole got pulled or something like that, they would know about it first, wouldn't they? Um, you would think so. I mean, because there's going to be, I mean, in order to do those things, the government has to make that announcement because these programs are in place. Okay. So they're going to know about that. Now, they work with, a lot of them work through um, a local nonprofit, uh, Fresno Interdenominational Refugee Ministries. Okay. They are the um, a, a refugee resettlement program for our area. Okay. So they work with many of the people. Uh, around here, and they've been working with keep in contact with people, let them know that hey, you know what, we're we're here to provide resources and help for you. Um, but a lot of it is dependent on the administration. Sure. Um, and what have officials said about using law enforcement to yeah. uh, help with uh, this immigration enforcement? That's been a big talk at the top level where they want to use cooperative states to help with non-uncooperative states. So here locally, uh, I had a chance to speak with uh, Luis Chavez, who may become the new supervisor. He is opposed to using the sheriff to help with those. Um, I had a chance to talk with the Fresno County Sheriff. Now he said we, he doesn't want to get engaged in hypotheticals, but he yeah. said that his job is focusing on local law enforcement issues, and that does not include immigration and customs enforcement. Okay, that's a big statement right there. Yeah. But, okay. Thank you very much for coming on and, and talking to us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Obviously, <laughs> a lot can happen between now and January 20th when Inauguration Day is, and then, of course, what will happen right after. Great day. We'll be right back.